in the conclusion of my talk, I would like to mention that if we analyze from history that the Britishers, when they came to India, the Western philosophy, it influenced the Indian culture. And because of that, the Indian culture was going down. And towards the starting of the 19th century, we have several Hindu reformers. The pioneer amongst them is Raja Ram Mohan Roy, who was born in Bengal in 1772. He learned English, Arabic, and Persian. And he wrote a book in 1803, which spoke against idol worship. He believed in a philosophy of the Upanishads, that believed in the universalism of Upanishad, and he said that Almighty God is one. He has got no images. He spoke against idol worship and said Almighty God did not have avatars. He cannot become a human being. He even spoke against caste system. And when he formed his trust, the Brahmo Samaj, he mentioned his trust deed. He mentioned the trust deed that no graven image, no carving, no sculpture, no statue, no picture, no portrait will enter in this building. And there were many offshoots of Brahma Samaj, but all of them believed in the same philosophy, God is one, God has got no images, idol worship is wrong, God does not become avatar. They were against the caste system. As far as the cycle of samsara was concerned, it was optional. You want to follow, follow. Don't want to follow, don't follow. One among the offshoot of Brahma Samaj was Pratna Samaj, which was founded by Justice Zanade. Justice Zanade in Bombay founded the Pratna Samaj, and there he followed all these principles, but was strictly for the upliftment of the woman and said that the woman should be educated. And a woman who becomes a widow, she should remarry. The other great reformer that we had was Swami Dhanan Saraswati, who founded the Arya Samaj in 875. He believed strictly in the Vedas. And he said that the Hindus should follow only the Vedas. And he strictly said that God is one. God has got no images. He spoke against idol worship. He said God Almighty doesn't have avatars. The other great reformer that most of us are aware is Swami Vivekananda, who founded the Ramakrishna Mission. And he too spoke that we should follow the Vedas. And he said, though 99% of the Vedas have been lost, today we have only 1% of the Vedas which cannot be accommodated even in a large hall. But he said that we should not call ourselves Hindus, we should call ourselves Vedantists, follow the Vedas. Now if we analyze that the Britishers came a few centuries ago to India to do business, but unfortunately they looted our country and they had the policy of divide and rule. And they saw to it that there were differences between Hindus and Muslims so that they could rule. And they even corrupted many of the Indian culture. Because of that, Hinduism went down. And that's the reason that in the early part of the 19th century, there was a surge of Hindu reformers, like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, like Justice Anade. Whatever I spoke in my talk, all have been picked up from these great scholars. I am just a student of comparative religion. All these things I've spoken of Hinduism <laughs> is not my own invention. All these have been picked up from these great Hindu reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, like Justice Anna Day. I have only as a student of compiled religion, I verified it. And what I did, whatever they spoke, the references weren't given. I went to the Hindu scriptures and I gave the references. Only thing I did was added the references, nothing else. <laughs> and all the things I mentioned about Hinduism, it was always backed up with quotation from the Vedas and the other Hindu scriptures. I'm aware Vedas are the most authentic, but the reason I've given quotation from the other scriptures also, because many Hindus, those who believe only in Vedas, even if they remove all the other quotations, besides the Vedas, yet my talk will be 100% the same. But there are many Hindus, though they respect the Vedas, but they are more well aware of Bhagavad Gita and the Puranas. So because of that, I've quoted these scriptures also, so that they can come closer to the Vedas and come closer to the concept which is established in the Hindu scripture. The Britishers, they had the policy of divide and rule. And unfortunately, even I fell prey to that. I thought, how could Hinduism have similarity with Islam? Impossible. After reading books of these great scholars, these great reformers, and doing research, that's how this talk has come about. But the main reason that these Britishers 
They had the policy of divide and rule. Our country has got the freedom from the Britishers, but unfortunately yet we are slaves to the policy of divide and rule. And unfortunately, most of our Indian politicians, if not all, most of them, they follow the same rule of divide and rule to get their votes. <laughs> India is the country in the world which has the maximum number of rights. Every day we have more than one right on average. And if you go to the background of these rights, almost all of these rights have been engineered by politicians for the vote bank. There was somebody who told me that the politicians, they add fuel to the fire. I told them, no, he's wrong. I don't agree that the politicians add fuel to the fire. The politicians, they add fire to the fuel. <laughs> the fuel, most of the time, is constructive. You know, the vehicles run with fuel, factories are working, the fuel makes the construction of a country. They add fire to it and they call destruction of the country. There was an article that came last month in the Times of India and Bombay. It says that according to Japan, in the next 20 years, India will be the superpower of the world. <laughs> we know that before the Britishers came to India, India was a superpower. Now, if all the Indians, all the Hindus and all the Muslims, if we go back to our scriptures, and follow the established truth of the scriptures, believing in one God, believing in the final messenger, believing in life after death. Inshallah, India will be a superpower. Only if all the Indians, the Hindus and the Muslims, if you go back to the scripture and follow the scriptures, we will be a superpower, we will be far superior to the Americans, far superior to America and the European countries, inshallah. <laughs> it is clearly mentioned in the Vedas. Rig Veda tells us in book number 10, hymn number 71, verse number 4, seeing the words they see not, hearing the words they hear not. You see it's mentioned in the scripture so clearly, yet you see not. You hear the words of the scripture, yet you hear not. Same thing the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 44. You study the scripture, yet you don't follow it. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 18, Summum, Bukmun, Umyun, Formula, Arjun, the deaf, the dumb, the blind, they will not do the two.